Hi everyone. Uh, good morning. Uh, today we are going to talk about instant access and how instant is providing a KYC verification platform using the hyperledger technologies and bringing portability to the solution. Uh, I am Shobhratra Das, the VP of Engineering at Instant and Alberto Leon, the lead SDK engineer, will assist me on the technical deep dive about the solution. So we at Instant consider the digital customer onboarding is broken in today's world. And I will explain why we say that. 40% or more good customers are rejected in today's world due to a lot of reasons like vendor orchestration failures, automated system false positives, uh, causing financial exclusion. And this is pre predominant to the world where the users are more Web3 users, the Zen Z, Zen Ys, which new immigrants, which has good financial access, but they don't have the traditional way of pro proving their financial identity using a credit system or similar means. So Instant is actually in forefront of giving this, empowering these users and bringing to their financial freedom. Instant actually taking a quite different and innovative approach to mitigate this problem. Instead of just providing uh, API-based service, like many of the traditional uh, provider in this segment, Instant is providing a risk-based approach where it is taking the loss liability indemnification up to $100 million to its customers. And when we say that, uh, when Instant taking the entire risk of fraud loss indemnification based on the customer business, and customer doesn't need to worry about the fraud loss. They can focus on their core business instead of worrying about the fraud loss. Instant provides a managed service. So instead of customers need to operate, configure in number of different vendors, being it a document verification vendor, being it a KYC vendor, or any other sort of vendor, Instant manages all the vendors and provide a very simplified and smooth interface to the customer in a managed way so that customer doesn't need to worry about that and they can focus their core business and in, in that way it simplifies the integration. Also, the other aspect of Instant's innovation on the technology front is that instead of just providing an API-based interface, Instant provides a SDK toolkit which aligns with customer's core technology sits inside the customer's application and provides a lot of underlying information which Instant uses uh, using machine learning in the back end to provide innovative insight about the fraud risk of the customer user profile. And this low-code, no-code integration can be based on any technology that customer choose or prefer. It can be iOS, Android, web technologies like Angular, React, or any other things. And that provides a very low code, no code solution with a single or few lines of code. Customers can able to integrate the Instant system and reduce the complexity. Instant also innovate this from the business model perspective that Instant charges only for performance. Unlike any other operator in this segment, Instant doesn't operate based on a metered model that you provide the business as a business you need to pay for every transaction instant covers only for good transaction when you are able to onboard a customer after instant verifies the customer and that innovation provides a huge potential for the customers to reduce the cost in this system so that is instant score platform which is called instant accept but on top of that, now Instant is collaborating with Hyperledger to provide a decentralized solution where the end users can own their identity instead of relying on the third party or any other vendors to own their identity. And I'll talk about a little bit about more about that. The, the core technology called uh, self-sovereign identity. And this in this world, there are issuers and verifiers, and Instant acts as an issuer of a credential or token, which the end users can store in an Instant and Hyperledger compliant wallet. 
once they store the credential on the wallet, they don't need to provide the same PII data again and again to every time they want to sign in to the same customers, as well as there are interoperability so that this um, token or the cre credential can be used for similar compliant businesses who also sign up for instant access. This provides the portability and allow the end users to retain their identity. The, it also increases the privacy of the system because this is built on something very crucial which is called zero knowledge proof. And this is akin to the system in the real world in a sense that if you go and for, you, you need to prove that you are an adult 18 years of old, maybe you need to provide your driver's license. But in digital world with this technology, you can just give a binary answer which is called verifiable presentation and that's, you don't need to provide all your PII data to prove a certain use cases. This technology is built on blockchain or distributed ledger and that actually the core piece that negates the, any central authority and thus improve the trust in the system as well as negates any cybersecurity risk and reduces that. So, so all these top things are built into this portable KYC solution, which we are saying instant access, which is built on top of instant core platform, instant access. So once instant onboard a customer from the lifetime of the customer, that they can actually interact with their, the businesses using this portable solution, KYC, and they don't need to re-verify. This reduces the friction in the compliance, this reduces the friction in the operation, so that you forget your password, you need to re-register again, you don't need to go through those complex process, customer care, and all these things. You, As long as you have the, your credential in a compliant digital wallet, you can use that to pro prove your credential from then on through its life cycle. So what Instant Access does, in, on, built on top of the Hyperledger tool chain, Instant ac Access makes it easy for the businesses to transition from the traditional centralized onboarding process to a decentralized onboarding process. And in this, say, customers actually have an option to give all or the a segment of its customer base to onboard in a decentralized world. And they can do it through configuration with few easy click. And they can actually give that choice to the end users when they want to do that. And the manifestation happens based on a QR code or a deep link. And the end users have a choice to make the decision when they are comfortable to move, depart from the centralized world to decentralized world. The instant access, because it is compliant with Hyperledger technology stack, there is a governance framework involved. So the trust, the businesses and the end users, not only trusting instant solution, they are also trusting the all the governance players that involved in this ecosystem, including Hyperledger, including Sovereign Foundation, including Task Over IP Foundation, and many other organizations. And Alberto, my colleague, will delve into more details onto this. But on top of that, Instant also provides a standardized level of assurance, which is based on the features our customer chooses. So for example, at the very minimal, we provide a level of assurance, uh, a third level of assurance, but the customers can choose additional verification features like OTP or document verification to level up that uh, assurance for their users. If a customer doesn't want to use the interoperability aspect of this, they can still use the passwordless login into their own ecosystem. And many of the customers uh, that Instant works with have their product silos that they have many different onboarding across their product chain. And this is the passwordless KYC, actually a very good use case for the enterprises use within their product silos. With that, I'll hand over to my colleague Alberto to deep dive onto the Hyperledger and the technology chain.
Hello, can you guys hear me? Hi. Morning guys, uh, Alberto here. I'll talk about a little bit more about the, the technical side of what we use at Hyperledger along with our product. Uh, so thanks Subhatra, uh, first of all. Uh, he explained a little bit about instant access. Uh, we do a sign up process, the KYC process. And we'll show a little in a little minute uh, what that demo looks like. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about decentralized identity first and how it's kind of you know, evolving and progressing. Um, uh, foundations like Hyperledger along with W3C, which you know, brought us HTTP, HTTP um, and other famous protocols we use today uh, in this uh, newer internet era, you know, are working with decentralized technology as well. There are current working groups with Hyperledger, W3C, Identity Foundation, and many other um, consortiums who are looking forward into you know, creating these new protocols. So I'll talk a little bit about the technology that's kind of based in decentralized identity. Of course, we have the ledgers, the blockchain, which is the main core focus. Uh, decentralized, I decentralized ID which represents um, you know, any other ID we're you know, used to using, except they have a common you know, signature and some cryptography, which we'll talk about in a second. DITCOM protocols, which is the communication we, that, they, um, that we use or between different actors within the ecosystem, which we'll get into in a second as well. Verifiable credentials, which represent you know, this new way of you know, representing yourself and your data. And a level of assurance, of course, and uh, a JSON LD schema. So, if there's any developers out here, um, if you're familiar with JSON, uh, JSON LD is very something very similar. It's the format that we use for uh, verifiable credentials. Uh, so, this is what the DID looks like. The the ID for uh, Ledger technology. Um, basically, uh, these you have a schema, a method, and a specifier. Uh, these are really cool because they work with ledgers and they are permanent, resolvable, and they are very persistent. So this is what the DID architecture looks like. Um, you know, the as you know, a driver's license that you may hold in your wallet. Uh, you're the controller of that driver's license. There is a DID subject, and there's a controller. Um, there's a DID document that contains information about that credential, along with some cryptographical uh, signatures, and all of that stored in the verifiable data registry, which re basically represents the blockchain, right? And um, it could it, it could be either other things too. It doesn't have to be the blockchain, but this is what we use currently for our product. And we have the verifiable credentials, of course. Um, these are the you know the new IDs that you'll hold in your wallet, and these you know have some certain data to them. You have credential metadata, you know some basic information about who holds that ID, who controls that ID, and other extra information. We have claims, which is the attributes to the ID, you know like name, phone number, whatever it may be. And the proofs, the proofs is what makes this a little bit different to other credentials, which contain signatures by the issuer and other uh, important cryptographical information. And the verifiable presentation is just an abstract part of verifiable credentials, but this is what allows the users to just present certain type of information, which we'll take a look in a second. All right, so what does the flow and the roles kind of come into the decentralized identity world? Well, we're probably, you know, used to seeing, you know, the normal process of, you know, basically, you know, if you want to go buy a, a six pack of beer at the liquor store, you would, you know, um, present your ID to confirm you're, you're of age, right? So <clears throat> to get the driver's license, for example, your state ID, you would have an issuer, for example, that will play uh, the DMV. And then the holder, you know, you're the person who actually holds the ID and then the verifier. Um, so the clerk would be the one that verifies your ID. And all this kind of uh, connects to the uh, verifiable data registry, which is the blockchain. So this is the, the new process that we're kind of um, working with Hyperledger and the tools, which I'll get into in a second. So uh, that's, this is the really cool thing about it. Um, we're basically taking IDs and kind of um, putting them into the blockchain, which makes it uh, more frictionless for companies and uh, also for users kind of are assured that their data is being protected. So with Hyperledger, we use three main components, Hyperledger Indy, Hyperledger Arius, and Hyperledger Ursa. 
Uh, Indy is what we use, the framework we use to interact with the ledgers. Uh, Happy Ledger Arius is what we use to come to communicate with the different actors, so between the issuer, holder, and uh, verifier. And URSA, which is the cryptographical framework that we use to decode and encode things. So the great thing about Hyperledger is they provide these tools, open source, big community, lots of developers, um, and it's really easy to kind of leverage this into your project. And uh, at least coming from a developer's perspective, this is really cool because uh, these concepts are rather new and kind of uh, unfamiliar to most developers. And these, these frameworks really help developers just basically um, not to be too familiar with the concepts and just use the basic functions, which is really great. Uh, this is what the stack looks like. Uh, at the very bottom, we have the blockchain. Then next to it, we have the Arias protocol, which is the communication, as I mentioned, and then the crypto library, which is URSA, which is to encode and decode things. So uh, the trust framework. So we can talk about technology, and we can talk about you know uh, the different frameworks that we use to in order to kind of leverage uh, Web3 technologies, but we also work with governance as well. So this is what the trust framework work looks like. So basically it's two pillars, or um, one pillar will represent technology and the other pillar will represent governance. So on one side we can talk about you know the blockchain, but then we can talk about the governance of that blockchain, right? The rules and best practices for that blockchain. And different users can subscribe to your own governance. So the second layer would be, you know, how we communicate between the different actors, the different, you know, um, subjects within the ecosystem. And, you know, the, frame, the governance framework would be, you know, who talks to who and how, right? So these are the different layers of what that represents. So in other words, we don't just want technology, we also want governance, right, to make this even more perfect. So with Instant Access and Hyperledger, um, we, we create this great synergy. Uh, our product basically takes you through the onboarding KYC process of your customers, but we add you know, this extra layer of Hyperledger blockchain, which makes you know, process very frictionless, and even you know, you guarantee security for your users, and you know, they're using Web3 technology, so it's really great. Um, so for our product, Instant Access, it, once you sign up for our product, you'll basically uh, get access to a dashboard where you can configure what kind of liveliness check, biometrics you want to check with your, your end users when they're signing up for your product. And then we have a wallet that we provide, but it doesn't necessarily need to have, be our wallet. We, you, can, you can use any wallet. And, uh, and we'll show you here a quick demo what that looks like. So this is Acme Bank. Acme Bank is just a demo bank in order to kind of um, just show you guys what this looks like. So Acme Bank basically, you know, you would sign up. This could be very well your, your kind of home page where your users sign up to. You'll kind of enter, you know, PI data, basic data. And from here, uh, you can't see our product, but it's running in the back end. You can configure this however you like. Uh, we're gathering biometrics. We're scanning you know, for bots. We have AI models, which kind of provide a way to uh, facilitate whether this user is a bot. We're checking that the same data isn't being you know, sent uh, uh, various times within a certain amount of time frame. Um, we're also checking um, all the data about how, how real this person is. And we'll get to the end here, where we'll, we'll see here, we'll give, be given the option to actually get a credential. So here, um, users, once they sign up and they're logged in, they get the credential just by clicking that. This is the wallet. We'll get the credential. Um, same data we just entered. We will just validate that we have all the proper information here. So we have some extra data, expiry date. These are the attributes or the claims that I mentioned before. Uh, you'll get sent the VC by the issuer, in this case is Acme Bank. And this credential can be used to log in into the same bank. So you just go to login. Uh, you'll be provided the same button, but this can be a QR code. And that will open up the wallet again. And then I'll say, hey, do you want to share this data with this, with this company, right? And all you see here uh, is the email, and that's pretty much it. 
And there you share the data and that will kind of frictionless, which was something that my partner SD mentioned, and have you signed in automatically. So here, the bigger picture is, let's say you subscribe to the same governance, other companies, and this is Apple Mart, another demo uh, e-commerce page. Um, and if this Apple Mart subscribes to the same governance technology, you can easily you know, uh, sign up, but instead of entering your PII data and the regular sign up data, what you'll do is just scan the QR code. It'll ask you know, for you to share your data. But since it's already been issued by a company like Instant that's already validated me as a real user, I can just simply share uh, the credential with Apple Mart, and that would automatically onboard me without going the regular, through the regular PII process and sign up process. And I'll leave this back to Subhatra to talk about the dashboard. And uh, he'll talk a little bit more about that. Thanks, Alberto. So Alberto just demonstrated how instant customers can leverage and open up the instant wallet and instant compliant wallet and provide the end users a credential, which is backed by Hyperledger, which is backed by decentralized technologies and prove them that they can actually own their own ident identities. But as a customer, the businesses can come to s log into Instant Dashboard and can still verify all the information, all the processes that Instant provided and Instant applied to verify that end user before they actually provided a credential. And that manifested in the justification, what are the positive, positive aspect of that user that manifested the KYC aspect of the system, document verification, device manifestation, biometrics, behavior check, and the machine learning model that Instant is applied. So in a summary, the, these are the benefits of the Instant platform as a whole. So you get the fraud loss indemnification, which is a business model shift that we are doing in the industry that as a business, you don't need to worry about the fraud as a risk anymore. Instant is taking over the fraud loss indemnification from you as a business, not just a metered service. It also provides the frictionless onboarding. You get to choose a SDK of the technology choices from yours and integrate that with few loss and with the portable KYC, it brings that frictionless communication to the end users and cut down the operational overhead and bring trust to the system. It built on the open standard based on all the good things that Hyperledger and other organizations are doing that provides the openness of and trust into the system. And it also, we also provide additional account monitoring that we do not only help the customers to onboard the end users, we can also monitor the entire life cycle of the engagement of the end users with the customer with uh, account monitoring, which is our next product extension, which is called Instant Verify. So this is a case study where Instant helped the leading retail uh, lender to drive 11 million fraud loss with to zero and the eventually the entire amount of the revenue save was more than 24 million dollars for that customer so the road ahead we we have the best product for instant access but there are more things to do so one thing is to establish an ITF governance framework across the KYC with bringing in the other players into the market and have our interoperability, standardization of the KYC level of assurance so that that can be interoperated within the industry, as well as creating a digital services marketplace so that the end users can find the compliant businesses which actually provides instant access. Obviously, more deeper partnership with OSS communities like Hyperledger is in our roadmap as well. So more customers, less friction, zero fraud losses in minutes. Thanks, everyone. Uh, we can take any questions you have.